where there is no Adventist church. This past summer, we had the privilege of going to that same city there, and as we were uh, knocking our doors, I remember the, the name of, the, of that church. So I drove by that church, and I noticed something interesting. I saw that they had Sunday service at 6 p.m., but nothing in the morning. Then I, I saw Saturday, and they had services at 10 a.m. This church is keeping the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. They're keeping the Sabbath. So we went to back to their house. We started talking to them some more. And we talked about the Sabbath. And we talked about the health message. And uh, she said something interesting that I won't forget. She said, Ellen White was, in, was a servant of the Lord. And she was inspired with the health message. This is a Pentecostal pastor's wife. God is using and will use today literature to reach people. Amen. I just want to read something really quick. When you look at the screen, notice something. <clears throat> notice it says, we must carry publications to the people and urge them to accept. Amen? Showing them that they will receive much more than their money is worth. Exalt the value of the books you offer. You cannot regard them too highly. Amen? It's a great conversation. All right, powerful experience, and hopefully we'll be having some of those experiences today too. Now I know there's a big group of us, and we don't have the um, the cameras on our faces, and so to some of you in the back, we're about this small. So what we need you guys to do is get into training mode right now. I know we're up on this big stage, and we're all dressed up nice, but this is kind of laid back. We are training you. If you have your iPhones or iPads or something to take notes with, I would highly recommend it. You do have your training cards here that you can but please take notes, and what we're trying to do in 40 minutes is basically um, what we normally do in two and a half weeks with our summer program students. But we've broken it down into bite-sized pieces. It'll be really simple, and as long as you know the basics, by God's grace, you will have a good time out there. So right now we're going to go over something called the basic five. The basic what? Basic five. It's an acronym. B stands for book in hand. So remember, these five things you have to remember around the field if you want to have success. Book in hand. A stands for accelerate. S stands for smile. I stands for intercede. And C stands for canvas. What does this all mean? AJ is going to break it down for us. All right. What does B stand for? Book in hand. This is a really important concept to understand as a literature evangelist. When you put the book in somebody's hand, it does two things. Number one, it allows them to look at it and peruse it while you're explaining it to them. Number two, it helps create a sense of ownership. Imagine you're at the grocery store and you put a block of tofu in your cart. Then another customer comes along and he pulls the tofu out of your cart and he says, this looks good, I think I'm gonna buy this. But that's very <laughs> weird. Because the tofu's in your cart, you start feeling like it's yours. You have a sense of ownership over that tofu. The same thing happens when you take a book and you put it in someone's hand. They start feeling like it's theirs. So it's really important. You want to put the book in their hand. It's really easy to do. All you have to do is extend your elbow. Can you guys do that? <laughs> do this. Okay, you don't have tendonitis or bursitis or anything like that. Right? Extension. Let's see some extension. There you go. That's all you have to do, okay? When you put, when you put it towards somebody like this, they'll reflexively take it from you. It's not verbal communication. It's really easy. Ricky and I are going to illustrate how sad it would be if you didn't put the book in someone's hand before. Knock, knock, knock. Hey. Um, hi, my name is AJ, and this is my friend. Uh, we're supporting a community service in Orlando called Salt. I'll let you take a look. Okay. Take a look, sir. <coughs> what's, what's your problem, sir? Take a look. <laughs> the book is right here, sir. Take a look. Ah. That's all you gotta do. Extension. Uh -huh. Right. Look in hand. This is really, really important. A stands for accelerate. My first summer program leader, named Tosh Papa, he told me something I'll never forget. He said, Renella, you need to be fast on the grass but slow at the doors. What does that mean? Fast on the grass means in between the houses. You want to walk briskly, walk quickly. Why? Because we want to get to more doors to be able to get more literature and more books out. But also when you walk fast and you're not driving your feet, it gives you this sense of urgency. We're on a mission, aren't we? 
it's part of an important mission. And when you walk fast, it actually helps, it does something in your psyche. It makes you feel like, man, this is important. Another, um, something that's really important though, is not only being fast on the grass, but slow at the doors. Because all the literature that you have when you go out, uh, when you go out of the bus, is all you're going to have. So you really want to treasure it and spend time with the people. We'll be sharing with you a little bit later on how to connect with the people, but you want to spend time with them. Ask them if they have prayer requests, if, um, and actually pray for them. You want to spend time. Lastly, another reason why you want to walk quickly is because of rejection. How many of you in here have been rejected before? Oh, all of us rejected people. I've been rejected too. And you're going to get rejected today. That's okay. Someone's going to say no, and that's fine. What the devil wants you to do after you get rejected, you know, you hand them and they say, no, no, that's fine, and they shut the door, there might be a tendency to feel like, they just rejected me. You know, and instead of dwelling upon that and allowing it to discourage you, just go straight to the next door. Just walk straight to the next door and just forget about what happened. Because what the devil will try to do today is that there will be 10 doors. And on the 10th door, there's going to be a powerful divine appointment, and the devil knows that. So he, he tries to, at those first nine, to get you discouraged and to bring people there that aren't very nice so that by the 10th door you don't even try. And so don't let it discourage you, but actually let it excite you. And when you get rejected, just say, all right, we're going to the next one. There's something right around the corner. So remember to accelerate. I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to frown. Is that very pleasant? No, I really, really want to make up that. So why don't you turn to your neighbor? Everyone's already smiling now because I was smiling. But I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to smile. The biggest, most Christ-like smile you can do. Amen? I, so you, I would want to be ministered to you guys now because you're smiling. Um, one of the most effective ways to uh, be a witness to those around you is to smile, is to have a cheerful attitude. Uh, they do say that atheists who smile can sell books, but Christians who frown can't. <laughs> it's really important to keep a cheerful attitude. A couple of my friends were going door to door, and they went up the door and knocked, and they were waiting there, and after a few minutes, they were wondering why the lady didn't come out. But eventually, the lady opened the door, and she, she said, you know, normally I don't come out. I normally don't open the door to door to door salesmen. But the reason I opened the door was because you were smiling. I saw it through the window and I wanted to talk to you. She ended up buying a set of Christ, amen? amen? So I want to challenge you, not only at the door, but in between the door, to smile and represent Jesus today, amen? amen. Alright, how many of you guys know this? More prayer? Much power. Alright, more prayer? Much power. More prayer? Much power. Great controversy, page 525, says that it's part of God's plan to grant us an answer to the prayer of faith that which he would not bestow did we not thus ask. We're going to be going through even more training afterwards, after the Basin 5. But I want to submit to you that all of the training we give you, even if you're a seasoned literature evangelist, it's not going to do very much if you don't pray. When you pray, you're acknowledging to God that we just really don't have what it takes. Guys, this is spiritual. When we go out there, this is not... Uh, cut con eyes, we're not doing curvy uh, vacuums. It's not sales. This is 110% ministry. And I want to read to you this quote. You have it up there on the screen. Corporate or ministry, page 115. It's powerful. It says, Whenever a book is presented that will expose error, does the great controversy expose error? Yes. It does. You know, the devil actually tried to kill Ellen White while she was writing this. That's how much it exposes him. So whenever a book is presented that will expose air, Satan is close by the side of the one to whom it is offered. That's kind of sobering, isn't it? And urges reasons why it should not be accepted. You guys are going to go into spiritual warfare this afternoon. But a divine agency is at work to influence minds in favor of the light. Ministering angels will oppose their power to that of Satan. Wow. Do you guys want that power? We have to have that power. There is nothing in us that can make the people at the door actually take our books or our literature. And I want to challenge you to do something today. I want you to challenge you to pray more than you perhaps ever prayed before. You know, our summer program students will tell us, man, when I went through Youth Fresh, I prayed the most I've ever prayed. Pray after this training. Pray as you're waiting in line, as 
they're going into the bus, bring with your partner. Great as you get into territory, as you get out in the, into the field, and maybe the doors are, you know, it's kind of tough out there, stop on the sidewalk and just pray. Ask that God will do more for you than you could ever imagine. I want Aki to share with us an experience of answered prayer. God answers prayer, amen? Amen. amen. I was working as a literature evangelist in uh, the city of Las Vegas a few years ago. I was going through this uh, cookie-cutter neighborhood, going door to door. There wasn't a lot of people home, and the people I was meeting weren't very receptive. And I was really getting frustrated. And finally I stopped. I prayed, God, please help me connect with somebody out here. There's people that you died for out here. Please help me reach someone. It was only a few doors later, I, I, I knocked and a lady opened the door, and uh, I told her who I was, and I gave her a book. She opened the book, and her face, she gasped. She said, <gasps> I said, what? She said, young man, God sent you here. I said, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, my friend and I were up until 2 a.m. last night. We were praying earnestly that God would help us understand the Bible. We were so convicted of our sins in our lives, and we were reading Revelation chapter 12. And we just couldn't figure out, what does this woman mean? What is the child? What is the dragon? We need to know, what does this mean? And now, she, the first page she opened up to in the book, it was an explanation of Revelation chapter 12. Yes. Yes. Wow. She ended up buying six books for her friends, including The Great Controversy. Friends, God has people out there for us. People who we're praying for and who are praying for us to come. Amen. Pray. 